Hello and welcome to Asia Gaming Brief's face-to-face -face series. Today I'm going to be talking with Tom Waterhouse. He's the Chief Investment Officer for Waterhouse VC. We're going to be looking at some of the opportunities in the booming US sports betting market and some of the exciting products that are coming into play. Thanks for joining us today, Tom. It's great to have you here. Um, you are now working in venture capital uh, outside of the industry in some senses. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're actually doing and why you made the move? Yeah, look, um, so I come from obviously a, a long line of bookmakers. My great grandfather was a bookie in the 1800s and grandfather was a bookie, my dad. And straight out of uni, I basically was an on-course bookmaker and, um, and just loved it, loved uh, going to the racetrack, taking bets. And, and then everything changed in 2000. 2008, uh, obviously 3, 3G came about, the iPhone, and the advertising restrictions lifted in Australia. So what was a, a great business being an on-course bookie um, suddenly changed. And we started TomWaterhouse.com as an online bookmaker, hoping that we'd be able to retain our customers. And it grew really fast. We went from 100 customers to a quarter of a million customers in 18 months. And and then in 2013, we sold to William Hill. They, they bought a, a few businesses in Australia and we were part of a roll up of those businesses. And then six months after that, um, they asked me if, if I wanted to run those businesses for them in Australia. And so ran William Hill Australia for four years from 2014 to 2018. And then uh, bought back TomWaterhouse.com, but on the condition that I didn't go back into betting for two years. And what, was really interesting during the time uh, of running William Hill in Australia is that uh, there was it was really a technology and marketing business, and there was such a long list of products that we had to put into or implement into uh, to being part of the William Hill ecosystem. And so our product roadmap was oh, sometimes two hundred products long, and we were always debating and analysing which one should go in and which was going to have the biggest uplift in revenue. And once they were in, they were very sticky because the focus was really on how do we increase revenue was more important as a, as a line than, for instance, let's say the cost line at that, at that period of growth. And um, so I thought, well, everyone, it's much easier to analyze the lines of the P&L of an operator, let's say the likes of Caesars or Entain or, or Flutter. Um, There's quite similar businesses, the same drivers of those businesses in terms of uh, turnover and revenue and marketing spend and bonusing spend. It's, it's a lot of analysts can get their head around that, but the actual products, the suppliers to the industry, that's a bit harder in that it's a, not only a valuation question, but it's a technology question. And that's um, I thought, well, why don't we just focus on this area of the products? If look at these products, spend a lot of time analyzing the technology. And if we like the product, and we think that it's a good chance that it could be make a big difference for these operators. Well, let's um, invest in those type of businesses, and and that was really the start of uh, Waterhouse VC, and um, and it's been going for the last couple of years, and 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 really enjoying uh, putting a different hat on, still being very close to the industry, but really spending time and seeing what the new um, where areas are growing, and and really making. Um, analysis or bets on on where what products will shape the industry going forward and, and that's been uh been really exciting so uh, two questions there where are you seeing the most opportunity at the moment and what do you think is the most exciting sort of growth area in terms of product look i think the biggest uh opportunity is in two areas is in the us obviously you're seeing these large scale operators they're growing revenues at 100 percent, let alone the smaller operators and the, and the suppliers so it's a once in a, not even in a generation, once in a hundred year uh, event, the fact that the largest economic nations allowed online sports betting in the last three years. So uh, every time a state opens up, I always think of it like a, a mini Australia or at least a couple of states in, in Australia and, and uh, just the opportunity, not only for the operators, but for all the suppliers and, and for the advertising um, companies and the big media companies, it's, Every time a state opens up, it's 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 a big big change and and a, and a big opportunity. And then the next area is um, you're seeing a lot of growth um, in the crypto and metaverse space, and and the fact that this sort of uh, seamless um, way to transact and 
to interact and, and how much easier it is for a, a customer to get access into going into playing, whether it's a casino in Decentraland or betting with some of these uh, sports books with crypto, uh, how quick it is to deposit and withdraw. Um, obviously, those numbers in terms of what the increase in revenues and stuff, they're not as easy as accessible and, and to understand as being able to go and analyze Flutter's P&L when they do their quarterly or half yearly reports. But um, it seems from the suppliers that uh, that we chat with that that's in those two markets is where there's, there's uh, tremendous growth. So you mentioned the metaverse here. Uh, can you tell me just a little bit how that works? I mean, that's so, so far in the future for me, that one. Yeah, so look, we spent a bit of time um, trying to get our head around um, Decentraland and, and really you can basically go in as an avatar, you can base, name what you, you want to call yourself and go and interact and you can buy land or you can go and do stuff in this metaverse. And, and what tends to be the, the thing that most people want to do there is go to the casino and uh, it allows you to bet in, uh, in tokens, in mana, which you can... Uh, exchange for Ethereum or uh, what, one of these like Ethereum type uh, tokens and um, change into mana and then just transact. And, and in terms of uh, KYC requirements or sign up requirements or being able to get your money out quickly, it's, it seems a far more seamless uh, and quicker way um, for people to interact. And, um, and also, you're in a way, it's anonymous in, in that you can. Go and be someone else in this uh, in this virtual world. It's 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 really interesting and and uh, amazing that, that again we we don't know and see can't see like turnover growth firsthand. We're just hear from suppliers and 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 hear about when talking to people that are developing on the platform what they see in growth. But it seems that um, yeah, there's a, there's a real appetite to interact in in that type of environment. I've also, I mean, obviously we've had great excitement about this US market. Um, you're not the only ones who have noticed there's been tons of mergers and acquisitions this year. Um, seeing quite a few people starting to talk about valuations being too high. Um, how do you see things at the moment? Look, so we focus, um, our focus is on the suppliers. The, the reason being is that we we think that the operators, they're, they're great businesses and like got some really top-notch caliber people running them. It's just that the reason why we prefer the suppliers is that they haven't got the same exposure in terms of the need for scale um, in that there's a constant battle of spending a lot of marketing dollars to get that scale. So you're in a a robust position uh, as taxes and regulations increase. And these businesses need a lot of money, not only on marketing, but they need a lot of money on technology spend to make sure the product and customer experience is best in class. And so it's a never ending uh, battle to on that journey to scale and, and to keep making sure that you can increase marketing spend and that you can increase product development. And that's a war that we don't want to play in. Um, it doesn't mean that there aren't clear winners and that there's not tremendous value in investing in these in these businesses. It's just not our sweet our sweet spot. We've um, talked about the US. I was wondering whether or not you see any particular opportunities in the Asian markets, and if so, where? Yeah, so uh, um, our, it, it, again, it's, it's hard, much harder in the Asian market to get information, you know, and to, to be able to analyze these businesses. So I guess what we see is that um, certain like suppliers and uh, what they're doing, they may have growth in the Asian market. You, you can often see that. Um, in Asia, the, what happens there and, and the growth that's happening there and the, and the suppliers they're using and, and what they're doing to, to grow actually become unbelievable suppliers in the regulated European, UK, uh, US market. And that's because uh, in many ways, it's, it's much tougher to get ahead in a, a grayer or an unregulated market because you don't have the same benefits of well, we're just going to spend unlimited money on marketing and get customers in the door and do the same old thing. You've got to be very innovative. Um, I guess what we're, the areas that we're focusing on as a fund, we, we focus obviously on fixed odds uh, data supplies because we know that area very well. Um, we 
feel that there's um, been a shift away from affiliate marketing in in the US, sorry, in the UK and Australian markets. But we think because of the high cost per acquisition in, in the US market, there'll be a shift back to the need for affiliates and content providers. Um, so, and we think that they they're also uh, haven't had the premium valuations that some of the operators and and some of the other parts of the industry have. So, we spend a lot of time looking at those um, those businesses. So, one last question for me, really: um, What would be your top prediction for twenty twenty two? I think, in terms of um, the environment that it is now, I think this. I would have said six months ago that it would be. Uh, probably a lot longer down the the path that you see significant consolidation. I think you, you you'll see that there'll be some some major deals uh, in this next year um, in that US market. Obviously, um, there's some been some false starts already, but I, I think that um, that will probably ramp up because the market's aware uh, from that last in, investor update um, from Flutter that. Marketing cost is is significant, and I don't think a business like uh, Flutter or DraftKings are going to take their foot off the pedal. Thank you for joining us today. I've been talking with Tom Waterhouse. He's the Chief Investment Officer of Waterhouse VC. Please join us every Friday for Asia Gaming Briefs interviews with thought leaders in the gaming industry.